Master Grade Jesta. Hey, what's up again, everybody? It's Robert1824, 2 hours 2 bs Gundam Dot, TK, and yes, the big boys are out to play here for the Master Grades from Gundam Unicorn. It's Shininju versus Shininju, but more importantly, the focus is going to be on the Earth Federation grunt back there in the form of the Jesta in Master Grade. The empty plates here, including the A-plate, which actually has four colors on there, with one corner being slightly different shade of blue, is going to result in these main body parts there. I've got some of the armor parts off so I can show you the inner frame down there, including for the legs. I didn't put on seals or decals yet because I figure if I get three, that's when I'll do it. But here's the weapons and accessories and a red light, which should make that head pretty interesting. And instead of my $2 lining marker for this one, I went at a pretty heavy here with the Gundam Black marker here and just the regular cleanup pen. When you put it all together, it's going to be the subtle color differences here between the gray and the two shades of blue there that are going to really help this guy. And it's a big plus that the inside and the outside of the legs are not going to be identical, so you'll have some fun when you're putting together the left and the right legs. For the hips up there, it's sort of interesting how well they're sealed in there. That's not something you often see, but you are still going to have this much movement there and up and down, and you'll notice that this part is offset. It's not in the middle of the gray parts there, as we usually see. The piping back here on the knees is not going to be as impressive as what you'll see on the elbows, but you do have these nice yellow pieces which are going to fit on there nice and solidly. A little bit interesting when you're putting on all the panels there, but you've got some lining possibilities there and the nice blue part, which surprising you put on last after covering it up with all the blue down there. And then for the ankles themselves, you can see that you're going to get very good movement side to side, front to back, and this part back here is going to be moving. Look at that bend there, and you can even do more, and that's because... It's the inside of the foot that's really going to set the bar pretty high here, just to kick things off, uh, literally, with his feet. You can bend that part there, and you've got a poly cap in the front, and when you take this part, this part is also going to have a bend mechanism. That's albeit not going to be moving all that much, it can still go in there very well, and when you do that, you're going to get that incredible range of motion that you just saw. Things are off to a very well-grounded start. And you'll notice that I skipped over the knee bend here, and cue the Mach Fury, because what's this? Bend that down. What? A new master grade today? Barely 90 degrees? What, what, what? Well, anyway, check this out because what you can do is you actually pop the whole knee mechanism up. Solid sound there. And when you do that, you're going to get the bend down there of about that 80 plus, And then you're going to be able to bring the whole knee out there. Now, it's not going to look all that spectacular if you're looking at it straight on, but you're probably going to be do some combination, which is going to keep it looking good. But then take a look at the back here as when you pull this up here, if it all works out, this little part down there is going to come and pop up, and then you can help it up here. So it's sort of interesting that he's going to go destroy mode, and you can hulk out those legs if you want. But very cool, and definitely setting a new bar here for Master Grades. With a better look here at the actual mechanism, the leg itself is going to be looking pretty good, if unspectacular there. You can see the moving parts back there. But there's your bend of 80 degrees, and if you want to pop this up... You can see that this part is going to come up even higher, and then the whole thing is going to go, and that's going to get pushed down there. You've got to make sure it's all the way up, and it's going to be exposing a piston there in the front. Very, very cool. And the waist section from a distance might look a little bit dull, but once you get up close, it's anything but lining possibilities there. Nice light blue, and the blue to go there for the main part, and it's all got these filled inside skirts. Always fantastic, the first thing the pros do in the magazines. And if you check this out, yes, this one and this one is different because you've got these little swing-up mechanisms here. When you're putting this together, of course, you'll realize that there's going to be a cannon coming. No doubt whatsoever. The inside, the fact that that's a yellow piece of plastic and not a seal is fantastic. You can see where the chest is are going to attach into there. And on the back, it was a little hard to put this piece in here. But when you do that, you're going to be able to put the beam rifle in place. More piping and lining opportunities back there. Really, the only disappointment was going to come in the form of the hand grenades. Or if you bend that down, yes, you're still going to see that gray bar down there in the middle. It's the kind of thing where you'd think with a master grade they could have gone in three individual ones. But it's going to be somewhat made up for the fact that you've got these nice rotating hips and they're going to swing down independently 180 degrees. Yes, things are looking better and better. And I keep waiting for laser beak to eject here as we get into the chest department. First of all, the shoulders, when you put this together, it's just an incredible mechanism there on the inside. You'll notice that if you swing it forward, you're going to be getting that slide out there, which is just looking fantastic. You can get it over 45 degrees forward, and if you want to go up and down, well, let's not call it 45, but it's still looking pretty impressive as everything's going to be moving as a unit and secure. 
Here you can see the backpack attachment point, which is going to go on and it looks like it's going to clip on there quite securely. Up on the top, the neck has some nice details in there and more importantly, a hollowed out area so that you can put the light inside, which will blast up through the eyes. And otherwise, just the regular lining possibilities with the mobility here, as you can twist the abs quite a bit side to side and forward back if you wanted to do sit-ups. Yes, he can. But it's more of those details there as we're going to get the blue, blue, and the light blue in there. Fantastic combination. Look great on the high grade. The master grade makes it even more evident because of its size. And for play options there, you'll be able to swing down this lower gate and it slides forward rather impressively as you can see that it's going to slide back in to close. You've got a generic Londo Bell Pilot in there, disappointing, but up here, this upper chest piece is also going to open up quite well. You can imagine some pretty cool hanger scenes there with these guys here and you can close that all up nice and secure. And on the back there, you'll notice that it's nice and easy to pull this whole thing out. And when you do that, if you want to go and take these lights, and for whatever reason, I never had any luck with these green lights being consistent, the red ones seem to be off to a much better start. Can't wait to see this in actual practice here. The inner frame of the shoulders here is going to be very indicative of the quality that goes into this engineering. First of all, nothing spectacular, but look at that. It's going to be moving all the way up. But more so, just the etching that went in there. It's the kind of thing where you almost want to leave it uncovered. But of course, I say almost. Lighting possibilities over there, and then when you do armor it up, it's going to be coming off three different plates. You've got this gray part there exposed for some nice internals, big pieces there for the blue. And then you're going to be covering up the vents there, so the short order there of the gray and the blue is going to be looking pretty cool and just have that nice armored feel to it. The arms are going to be looking cool. First of all, I'm a big fan of the shoulders up there. They've got a nice, just two parts of gray there. Solid poly cap, and then you really squeeze on a solid piece of blue there that's going to be looking great. But more importantly, look at those gears on the inside of the elbow. As you bend it, it just looks incredibly real. And just from that, you're going to be getting over 90 degrees. And yes, cue the mock out rage again. And try, you try even more. And then you're going to be popping out some internals there. This is an incredible 180 degree bend. And it's going to look great no matter what angle you look at it from. Again, the quality of engineering, astounding, and on the back, of course, you can hold some weapons and some more ammo packs in there. Down here, this gray part, it's always going to be disappointing that they just sit on there loose, but it doesn't seem to be a problem, unless you're going to have weight issues with the hands, which, with their emotive feel, should be pretty good. Individual moving fingers, lots of joints, and a solid peg mechanism when you want to go and actually attach the BR. And here you've got the three spare magazines to go along with the one that's in the beam rifle, so four in total. And you'll notice that they're going to go in there nice and securely as you can put them in one, two, and three. For this kind of solid and practical look. And oh new Gundam, how you taught them well in terms of asymmetry here for the arms. You've got a single beam saber here, so make sure when you're putting the arms together that you don't make a mistake as to which side panels you put on here. They actually stop you from putting the wrong ones on the wrong forearms there, which is a nice touch. And if you want to deploy the beam saber here, you'll just pop this part up ever so slightly. And look at that, you're going to be getting a rock solid swing forward, 135. Can't wait to see if he's going to be able to reach across and grab it. On to the gun here, where I may have overdone it with the black lining. I just went in there really solid as opposed to just going with the lining approach. And you can see for the parts back here, the rifle grip is going to have this part, which is going to bend down and fit into the emotive manipulators there. And then you're also going to have this folding grip, which will go up and down. Would sort of be nice if it went side to side or if we ever had a full swing mechanism. That might be a nice touch in the future. The muzzle down here is going to be looking solid and you can see the barrel looking good. And on the back here, we're also going to be having the stock with some details in there. If you wanted to go add some silver, you could. And how about this for the range sensor up here on the top? Clear orange all the way through. That is a very nice touch to go along with the orange eyes. Definitely a plus and way better than any seal. And grip up here for the waist unit. You can just drop that down and just plug that in for a solid feel. And how about the backpack here? Good details, although it's there's a surprising number of parts in here when you put it all together. You've seen how it attaches on, but more interest is going to be the main thrusters, which you can see are going to have a cool swing mechanism there on the inside. Just a little bit of uh, red paint there is just going to add a little bit of color. And if you move them up, you can also move these independently if you want to. But of even more interest is going to be up at the top where you're going to be having the multi-option rack. You can see that this is going to fit on either side and it's going to move ever so slightly. But the rest of the movement here is going to be coming from the flexible arm unit. It's sort of cool that you are going to be able to take this and put it on either side. 
but the shield is going to look best when you attach it over this shoulder. You can see it detach itself, but otherwise it's going to have a great range of motion here. Here it's not going to rotate, but once you bend this part down, it is, as this part here is going to allow a full swing around there. This part is going to have a full 180, and then this part here is also going to rotate. Can't wait to see this fully extended. But the shield has to probably be the most standout unit in terms of visuals here for the Jesta, and it's looking great in Master Grade form. You'll notice the two subtle shades of blue there and the yellow emblem done in plastic, not seals. Incredible there. And whereas the high grade here is just going to have dull gray, or just all light blue there for the missiles, you're going to be getting to the only two white parts there, which are going to go in. You could put some lighting on there if you wanted to. And even on the inside, you'll still see the different shades of blue there. And you've got this grip part here, which is not going to be doing anything too spectacular. But remember, you've always got that shoulder part to rely on. And when you put the head together here, this is going to be a style choice. I again went at it pretty heavy with the black Gundam marker there, which is, seems to be the way that they've done it for the pro-painted versions all around there. But otherwise, just a great mix of colors, and I love the fact that the head is not symmetrical there, as they're going to be keeping cool and unique options on both sides of the head. And incredible details there on the inside, as the main camera and the sub-camera there are both going to be provided with clear orange piping, and you've got white clear plastic there, or just clear, on the inside there to give it a bit of a mono-eye look as you go inside. The rear camera as well is going to come from that same orange piping. Hopefully it's going to show up there even better in the future. And otherwise, the sub-sensor array there is going to be looking good because of the colors to go along with the multi-load antenna there. And on the uh, other side here, you're going to have the Vulcan pod system. And I'm not too crazy about that. It's going to come across, you've just got a hollow, it's going to be somewhat hollow there on the inside in terms of just being recessed. And I decided, I did the same thing with the high grade, that if you're going to put on this green seal here, which is the only seal in the kit, you'll notice that I just cut out a little bit more and put it over there for the other side. More so for the symmetry and not so much for the cannon, but if you want, just paint it up black and you can make it all work. But more importantly here, if you plug this part in with the light already engaged, how about that? The main camera, sub-camera looking incredible, and even as far as the rear camera, this is looking truly master grade level if you can get past the fact that it looks like his neck is horribly cut open and bleeding. And really all I can say so far from the parts is wowza. A great build, great inner frame, great play options, great posability, and how about that light option? Anyway everybody, stick around to see if the MS is going to live up to the high promise of the parts, and stick around for lots more. Thanks for watching, see ya. Man, when I see that light up unit, I'm jealous I don't have a mono eye. I think it can be arranged.